Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm TZ Sweezy, aka Pinkbeard on Twitch, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how uh, the viewport setting has kind of been rewritten to uh, optimize it for graphics cards with some powerful new features on the uh, shading settings and just kind of these tools right up here. Now the rest of the viewport header is fine and dandy, but we're not talking about that in this video. So. Uh, we have some options for how our viewport gets rendered, and uh, I'm just going to let's deselect that, uh, or actually grab our select tool instead of having the transform tool active. And what we'll do is we'll just go up here and check some of these shading settings. These settings transfer over from 2.79, right? We have the wireframe, which when we turn that on, shades our scene with a wireframe. We also have the solid, which is the default shading for a scene. Uh, then Blender 2.8 actually has a new render engine called Eevee. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know that much about it yet. I haven't done my research. But this option right here, LookDev, is essentially powered by that new render engine to give us a render preview so that we don't have to sit and wait for the entire scene to actually render uh, when we want to check this out, we can kind of jump into look dev. It's going to give us a render preview and we can keep working and see how things are and adjust them without having to actually render the entire scene and wait for our computer to uh, put all the pieces where they need to go. So that is a very cool uh, and useful addition to our settings. Then we have our render settings, which right now you can't see a whole lot of difference between the look dev and the rendered version because there's not really a significant change here um, because of how simple our scene is. But if you were working with some more, um, you know, detailed models and some textures, there would be a significant difference uh, between the two. All right, then we have our shading drop down. Now with the rendered setting, we just kind of get back face culling. With the look dev settings, we have the option to use scene lights, which are any lights that exist in our 3D viewport scene. And I'll turn that back on so that way we can do that. Or we can use the scene world for lighting. And so with that, that gives us um, some things that we are some textures that we can kind of put in for some ambient light here. And just choose them. And you can rotate that, which that rotation is going to change the way that the shadows are being uh, drawn in the scene and increase the background uh, brightness. So there you go. Those are just kind of what you can play around with in there. We'll just use the scene lights and the scene world and leave it at that. Uh, coming back to the solid shading version, we do get the most um, options added in here. So we'll start with these and kind of work our way down. So right off the bat, we can have a flat shading. And this flat shading, you'll notice that all of the, the individual detail about faces has pretty much gone away. And so all we can see now are silhouettes. And these silhouettes are uh, really helpful for like just checking out you know, the, the general shape and form of what you were looking for and making sure that it is what it is. But uh, other than that, it's really not useful. It's not something going to do. So what we'll usually use is the studio version or the matte cap version. Now the studio option does provide some additional uh, lighting because it is lit by one of the HDRI light sources. And you can kind of choose one of these different. You'll notice there's some different tints in here. Uh, by default, it's this one on the left and you can just kind of click in around and see. Now when you rotate this, because you can rotate them, you'll notice that they, it will change the way the scene is lit up to provide you some different shadows. So just something to be aware of, if this box is not checked, it won't actually like change the lighting with the rotation. So you'll need to make sure that box is checked in order for those shadows to, ch uh, shadows to change differently. But I'm just gonna put that back. Now, uh, even with these, we have some more options that we can play around with uh, down here with color, but let's look at matte cap real quick. Matte cap is pretty much the studio options, except for it does uh, do some additional shading and it can make things look really different depending on what you're trying to accomplish. I recommend not using these, but if it helps your eyes and, and it really helps you develop your models better, be my guest. Uh, so I'm going to stick with the studio setting and then let's look at the color options. So uh, we can shade with a single color. We can kind of change this color up however we want our models to appear. That's great. Uh, you can use that. You can also switch to a particular material. That material can be changed under the viewport display 
options there. You could change the color to a particular object or my favorite is the random. And the random is just going to assign a new color to each object in your scene. I find this particularly helpful when I'm working with some smaller objects just so that, um, you know, especially if they're right next to each other, I can distinguish between the two. So this is generally where I leave mine at the random. And also if you have a texture that you want to apply, you can do that, All right? These also work with the flat uh, option we can flat shade them all a different color so you can still see them and their outlines now with the background uh, the background you have three options here you can either have the standard blender theme which is the grid which is now endless in blender 2.8 you can't outrun the grid anymore which is a big improvement or you can switch the to the world which just brings in kind of some ambient lighting for the world scene um, or you can switch to the viewport now the viewport can be any color you want it to be if you want to do that. So you want a blue view, viewport? Awesome. You got it. Green? Great. Uh, all the way black? Perfect. Doesn't matter. Um, I'm just going to stick with the theme. I think it's just it's good enough the way it is. And I, I really don't work with these, but, you know, pick your poison. Now, you do have some extra options down here um, that are kind of new. So we have X-Ray, and X-Ray is toggleable by uh, this object or this button right up here. And this will make your entire scene transparent. Now you can change the uh, intensity of the X-Ray by simply grabbing this and dragging it up. The closer you get to one, the more opaque or solid your objects will be, where you get to zero and basically all that's gonna be left is the outline of the um, silhouette. Now you also have a shadow option, but it is not compatible with the X-ray, so you need to make sure that's turned off. And you can increase shadows, and it will increase the shadows being drawn in your viewport scene. Just something that you can see. Now cavity, I don't have an ambient occlusion, but uh, cavity is an ambient occlusion effect that will emphasize if we do that. Um, you can actually just see how that plays out. So we turn off shadows, turn off cavity, um, but we turn on cavity, you can kind of see the peaks and valleys of the scene geometry. And so it's really good about outlining that. And that's just something that's new. Uh, we also have outline, which will emphasize um, the kind of outline of the object. If you want to change that to white, you can see that a little bit better. I didn't even notice it while it was black. But now that it's white, I can see the outline if you want to do that. Or you can just turn that off and you won't see that at all. OK, that's basically all of our shading settings. Now let's take a look at these other buttons and uh, we'll be done. We have the option to toggle between perspective and orthographic now. It's just this grid. Now when you hover over that, you also see a tooltip pop up that says, hey, you can also hit the number pad 5 and it will toggle between orthographic and perspective as well. So I probably would never use that, just hit the numpad five. Then you've got the camera view. If you toggle that, you're going to see what the camera sees, and it's just going to uh, put you there regardless of where you're at in the scene. That's a pretty useful tool. You can also come over here and uh, pan around in your scene by just clicking and dragging on this one button. And if you wanted to zoom in or zoom out, the plus button here will allow you to do that by clicking and dragging your mouse uh, back and forth. Then we have uh, kind of our axes up here in the right hand corner and if you click on any of these buttons you will see from a particular um, static viewport. However if you click anywhere inside the white or the kind of light gray circle here click and drag and you will be able to rotate around in your scene. So if you forget that uh, middle mouse button allows you to rotate, shift middle mouse allows you to pan and zoom in, zoom out doesn't work. Or if you find yourself zoomed in too far, because you'll notice as I scroll in, uh, it gets too far and you want to simply back yourself up um, real quick, these options are there to help you. Um, they still are affected though by how close you're zoomed, so you might want to be aware of that. Now, uh, one of the, the more useful things, now that there are no longer view layers, the viewport has been coded to work with the collections. So let's go ahead and move all of our Suzanne monkey heads into uh, a new collection. So we'll hit M and then bring up move to collection and add a new collection. And we'll just call this monkeys and hit OK. And so now all of these are in the monkey collection. So if I only want to see the monkey heads, I can simply click on the collections icon 
and turn off visibility for the other collection, and I'll only see the monkey heads. All right, you can also use this to say, you know what, I don't want to be able to select anything in the other collection, but I still want to see them. So now I can no longer collect the uh, select the sphere, cube, light, or camera because they exist in that other collection, but I can still select all of my monkey heads. Right, then you have an object type visibility. You say, you know what, I don't want to see any uh, camera objects. You can turn off particular objects, any light objects. If we only want to see our non-mesh objects, we can turn off our mesh object visibility. Uh, and so this is a new thing here. And then we have our overlay section. Now this is, um, you know, pretty big and, and whatever, but the kind of the cool stuff here is if you don't want to see that grid anymore, you can turn off that grid guide. Uh, if you don't want to see the 3D cursor, you can turn that off as well. If you want to see the Z axes or the Z axis, you can add that. Um, annotations, you know, which you can add by holding D and clicking into the scene. Well, we turn it off, but when we turn it on, you can see the annotations are there. So this overlay will allow you to change what you see in the scene that are just there to kind of guide and help you. All right, and with that, uh, the video on how the viewport has been changed and what those new things up in the top right-hand corner are uh, is finished, and we will get into mesh modeling in our next video series. I'm Sir Pingbeard, and I'll see you in the next video.